Here I am at the San Jose Museum of Quilt and Textile, walking into the exhibition of I Was India, Embroidering Exoticism. This is the Purcella Gallery in their museum space. What I really love about the San Jose Museum of Quilt and Textile is that it doesn't try to be a neutral art space. You can tell from this carpeting, the gray walls, the signage, exit signs, even in their title, San Jose Museum of Quilt and Textile, that they have a very specific history they're working out from and are not trying to make a blank canvas in which artwork can come in. Rather, they understand their history is first quilting and then textiles more broadly. I appreciate that they take an unapologetic framing of their artwork that they display here because like this exhibit, I am also trying to think through pieced together constructions of identity in how they are held up through non-neutral spaces. But in this show, I wanted to use embroidering gestures, how the needle pierces through the cuddy fabric the backing brown cloth. And so all of these pieces for me are my embellishment into this space, into this kadi. So whether that's a Mapuche weaving technique on a backstrap loom with Indian fabric and climbing rope, or it's the intervention of a jacquard woven chintz floral pattern that's then woven into the grid of created from a floor loom or from my own family story being interwoven in. There's some Mickey Mouse ears woven into the Pukari pattern from my great aunt, from her salus. When I was making this, I was surprised that the Taj Mahal and the It's a Small World architecture actually looks surprisingly similar. <laughs> One of my favorite lines in the research I did around Pukari making was from this article where it says, Pukari making for export to America. It was stitched, worn, exchanged, purchased, inherited, and hoarded. Which sounds a lot like any contemporary textile maker today. <laughs> So embroidering for me here is how is a matter of interventions. What are my gestures and interventions into my cultural, architectural, and urban kadi that surrounds me? The idea for this show originated with these two pukaris or salus, which were given to me by my grandmother, Lavai Jo Hall. They were given to her in the 1950s, 60s, when she was in India with my grandfather. They were embroidered by her sister-in-law, my great aunt, Dalip Kaur, when she was around 13 years old in 1925. These were two of the fabrics my grandmother carried with her on the ship as she 
went all around the world between India and England, Canada, the United States with my grandfather. This piece has two fabrics, Punjabi suits, that my grandmother gave me and that I wore as a child. The blue one is from my childhood and the white one is from my grandmother. The stories then that I heard growing up were what she carried around with her in her steamer trunks on these ships. And as I wanted to think through what it meant to grow up with an Indian identity, both for her as well as for myself, when she presented herself most of the time as Hawaiian. It all centered around my mother, who, as a child, rode elephants in the parades at Disneyland and was the first person on the boat with Walt Disney at It's a Small World when it opened in 1966. My story then is one that begins with my great aunt embroidering at 13 in India, moves to my grandmother traveling around the world and my mom and her siblings performing Indianness at Disneyland and telling me stories about their relatives coming from India and using the branches of the trees in their backyard to clean their teeth. as well as meeting Nehru when he came to visit the US. It's a collision of stories and identities that I never quite see perfectly. For me, they're just a family history that becomes woven together.